Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Nomad Plays Balloons. And today, I'm going to teach you how to farm. Or more specifically, how to farm efficiently. So if you're new to the channel, I've basically been playing balloons for about six months now. And it's become quite apparent to me that if you want to get the stronger towers, you're going to need to farm with banana farms. And now, using the power of maths, I have figured out the best way to farm, at least in my humble opinion. So stick around if you want to hear what is the best possible farm to build, what is the worst possible farm to build, when is the latest you can start building, some other nice tricks to generate income, and the patented nomad method, which should hopefully make you a farming champ in no time at all. But let's quickly just start by going through each upgrade and just having a look at what they do. So of course we just start with a regular farm which is 1350. I'm not playing with any monkey knowledge and all of the figures in this video are for hard difficulty. If you're an easy or medium, the numbers might change, they usually be a bit less, but everything here is for hard. Now if you look at the top path, we got increased production. So we got more bananas, more bananas, more bananas, your bananas get replaced by crates, which gives you lots of bananas, and then even more expensive crates. On the second path, we've got longer lasting bananas, which means you've got more time to collect them, more valuable bananas. Then you've got a monkey bank. Now this is different to everything we just talked about. A monkey bank produces bananas, but it keeps them in the bank. It then applies 15% interest to those bananas every round. You can collect your bananas at any time, but it maxes out at 7,000. At 7,000, the bank will stop producing bananas and you will no longer get any more interest. So you absolutely must collect them at that point. IMF loan is basically another bank, except now you can collect up to 10,000. It also allows you to collect a loan of 9,000, but you do have to pay that loan back. And I basically think you lose about 50% of your income until it's paid off. Monkeynomics is the same as an IMF loan, except now it's not a nine grand loan. They just give you nine grand for free. Moving on to bottom path, easy collect just basically saves you some money if you haven't collected the bananas. So does banana salvage. Marketplace produces bananas and auto collects them for you so you don't have to lift a finger. Central market does the same thing except it produces more money. And if you've got merchantmen, it'll increase their income as well. Monkey Wall Street is exactly the same thing as the central market, except at the end of each round, it will give you 4,000 for free and give you some lives back too. Right, that's all the upgrades. Now let's talk about how we're going to calculate which one of these is the best. And to do that, I'm going to have to introduce you to some terms, but I hope they'll be very easy to understand and explain why I think one farm in particular is the best one out of all of them. And also, they'll tell us which one's the worst. So let's hop to it. But the first thing we need to understand is the simplest one, which is how much does each farm cost? So the base farm costs 1350. And if we go down the top path, the next upgrade will be 540. And the one after that will be 650. So a 200 farm is going to cost us 2540. Hopefully that's simple enough of a start for you. Moving on from cost, the next thing we need to figure out is how much each of these farms is producing. So if we start with the basic farm, that produces 80 bananas per round. And if we upgrade that to a 100, that'll then produce 120 bananas per round. And if we go to a 200, that'll be 160 bananas per round. That is what's known as our income or our revenue. Now you might think that the revenue each farm produces is the most important thing to look out for, but it's not. It's the second most important thing. The most important thing to look out for is something called yield. This is just a fancy way of saying how much value are you getting from these farms? How much bang are you getting for your buck? How efficiently? A farm is transforming the amount of money you put into it into an income. So a yield is just a way of saying a rate of return. And the way we calculate yield 
is simply to divide the revenue by the cost of the farm. The higher the yield, the better value for money you'll be getting from your purchase. Now to explain this, let's look at our hypothetical example. Let's say we have two farms. One farm costs 1000 and will generate 100 per round. And another farm will cost 5000 and generate 450 per round. Without actually doing any maths, I think most of you can tell that farm A is better value for money. And you'll be right because farm A has a yield of 10% and farm B has a yield of 9%. Even though farm B generates more bananas, farm A is better value for money. And one of the reasons why we need to know this is because of scaling. If we start a round with $5,000, we can either buy one of farm B or we can buy five of farm A which means 5 farm A's will generate 500 per round but 1 farm B will only generate 450 per round. In both scenarios we've spent $5,000 but farm A has generated more money because farm A has a higher yield. Hopefully now you can see why yield is such an important figure to know. Right, so we looked at a hypothetical example. Now let's look at a real one. So let's compare a 300 farm to a 100. And the first thing we need to look at is the cost. A 300 will cost 5,780, and a 100 will cost 1,890. Then we need to look at the revenue. A 300 farm will generate 320 bananas around and a 100 farm will generate 120 bananas per round. Now that we have these two figures, we can figure out what the yield is for both of these farms. And the 100 has a slightly higher yield at 6.35% than the 300, which has a yield of 5.54%. So let's use the power of scaling to get more money out of our 100 farms. So let's say we had exactly $5,780. We could either buy one 300 farm or three 100 farms. Now remember, a 300 farm produces 320 bananas per round, but three 100 farms will produce 360 bananas per round. So not only were three 100 farms cheaper to buy, they actually produce 40 more bananas per round because it has a higher yield. So using our newfound understanding of cost, revenue and yield and the concept of scaling, what is the best farm to buy? Drum roll please. It's a monkey bank. A monkey bank pretty much has the highest yield in the game. And it doesn't really matter which one you get either. You can get a 030, you can get a 230, you can get a 130. They're all gonna have fantastic yields. So when you're playing, you wanna maximize the amount of monkey banks you use. But there are three main issues that you need to consider. The first is the cost. A monkey bank is not that cheap. A 030 bank will cost you $6,480. That's not exactly cheap. The second issue is that monkey banks take time to maximize the yield. That means your money needs to sit in the bank for 9 to 11 rounds. If you collect your money before that, its yield will not be able to fulfill its potential. Now let's look at another real life example showcasing the power of the monkey bank's yield. I'm going to compare a 320 to a 200, a 203 and a 030 monkey bank. A 203 and a 320 actually generate the same amount of bananas per round which is 400. But because the 203 is actually cheaper it has a higher yield. But in this example Let's say we have $7,000.
we could buy 1030 bank, 1203, 1320, and 3200s. After six rounds, the 3200s are in the lead, generating 2880, with the 203 and the 320 both generating 2.4. The Monkey Bank is catching up though and has generated 2,265. By round 7, the Monkey Bank has actually overtaken the 203 and the 320, but it's behind the 200s. By round 9, the Monkey Bank is now in the lead, and it will stay in the lead up until you collect that 7,000. So provided you're in a position to let your money grow for 9 or more rounds, the Monkey Bank is the best way of generating income with its superior yield. Let me quickly explain why a Monkey Bank has such a high yield. First we need to calculate the cost, which is easy. It costs 6480 to make a 030. You can make a 130 for 7020, or you can make a 230 for 7670. Now we need to look at its revenue. Now if you were like me, you might have assumed that a 030 bank produces 80 bananas per round. But you'd be wrong, it actually produces 225. This isn't explained at all and the only reason I know this is because I used it in Sandbox. And in Sandbox, it doesn't generate the interest and so you can't see the monkey bank showing its full potential. A 130 bank will generate 274 per round and a 230 will generate 325 per round. At the end of each round, it will then apply 50% compound interest. Compound interest is incredibly powerful and it means your money will grow at an exponential rate. In other words, every round you will generate more money than you did in the round before it. A 030 bank will generate 7,000 in 12 rounds. A 130 bank will generate 7,000 in 11 rounds. And a 230 bank will generate 7,000 in 10 rounds, all because of compound interest. If we look at a 203 bank just to make things easier, we know it will generate 7,000 in 10 rounds. That means, on average, it will generate 700 per round. And that's our revenue. So now that we've got its revenue, and we know its cost, we can work out its yield. A 230 bank has a yield of 9.13%. A 130 has a yield of 9.12%, and a 030 has a yield of 9%. Compared to a 200, which has a yield of 6.3%, it's almost 3% more, making it a much more efficient way to spend your money. Now remember when I said there were three issues with using monkey banks? The first was the cost, the second was the amount of time it took to actually realize the yield, and the third one comes down to scaling. Let's look at yet another example comparing the monkey bank to another farm, this time to a 520. Now the Monkey Bank does have a higher yield, but the sheer cost of the 520, which is $135,490, it would mean that with the same amount of money, we would be able to buy 20 030 banks. 20! Luckily, it only takes 13 banks to actually match the 520's income. But hopefully you can see that scaling has its limitations. Eventually, you will run out of space. At this point, we do need to switch our focus from yield to revenue. Yield does represent how much value we're getting from the farm but a high revenue farm will still produce money. And eventually, if you run out of space, a high revenue farm will outproduce a high yield farm because the high yield farm will not be able to scale. I'll explain what you need to do to combat this later in the video. 
But first, I want to talk about what is the worst use of money for a monkey farm in the game. And this is going to exclude just getting long life bananas or easy collect or banana salvage. Those don't count. Those don't change the amount you actually generate. So aside from a 010, a 011, a 012, a 001, a 002, the worst possible monkey farm in the game is... You've probably guessed it. It's a 020. These are the lowest yield farms in the game. Valuable bananas can be handy alongside other upgrades, but you do not at any point want to upgrade to valuable bananas before either going down top path or at least getting to marketplace on the bottom path. Just don't do it. It's such a waste of money. Okay, now that we know that monkey banks are the best thing you can do, let's talk about when is the latest in the game you should be buying farms. When you buy a farm, you obviously have to put some money up front, which means you don't start making money until a couple of rounds later. This can be pretty confusing when you get into round 77, 78, 79 in a hard game and thinking whether buying a monkey farm would actually be a waste of money. Now to figure out when is the latest you should buy each farm, there's a couple more things we need to discuss first. You might be thinking that you need enough time to break even with your farm to make it worthwhile. But that isn't quite true. And the reason it isn't quite true is because what happens at the end of a game. Namely, you sell all your farms. And when you sell your farms, you actually get 70% of the money back. Meaning, you don't need to break even. You just need to generate enough to cover you for that missing 30%. Or if you want to be technical, you need enough time for your yield to be 33% or higher. In which case, you'll be making money. It might not be the most efficient way to make money, but you will be making money. You will not be selling at a loss. So the first thing you need to do is figure out when exactly you want to sell up. It might be round 78, it might be round 75, it might be round 72. I don't know, it's up to you. But the good news is, you can buy any monkey farm nine rounds or more before you cash out. That even includes that rubbish 020 monkey farm. When you sell it nine rounds later, you will still have made a profit. A small profit, but a profit nonetheless. A 000 farm can be bought six rounds before you cash out. Anything on the bottom path can be bought four rounds before you cash out. You shouldn't be building banks less than six rounds before you cash out. And although you shouldn't be buying them at all, IMF loans can be bought nine or more rounds before you cash out. Generally on the top path, you've got about six rounds before you cash out to buy them. If you're in any doubt, just remember this. The vast majority of monkey farms can be bought six rounds or more before you cash out. Six rounds or more. Some do take longer, but the majority will only take six rounds or less to make money. Now we've been talking just about monkey farms for quite a lot. So what I want to do now is talk about some other ways that you can increase the performance of your monkey farms. And I want to start with the monkey village. There's really only two things to be aware of in the monkey village when it comes to cash generation from your farms. And that's 004 and 005, or Monkey City and Monkeyopolis. Starting with Monkey City, to be honest, it just isn't worth it for the vast majority of farms. Where you can use it though, is if you've got a max path somewhere. So if you've got a 500 or a 050 or a 005, Monkey City will increase its yield, making it a better farm. When it comes to tier 4s, don't waste your time with IMF loans. The Monkey City will not help here. But when it comes to tier 4 on the top path or bottom path, provided you can build 4 farms or more around the Monkey City, it should help to increase their yield. And that's it. The rest do not get helped at all. So remember, tier 5s, and when it comes to tier 4s, 
ignore the middle path and you need four tier fours on the top path or the bottom path. Otherwise, it's a waste of time and a waste of money. Now moving on to the Monkeyopolis, which is a 005 monkey village. It uses a really strange mechanic. So you build farms around it and then based on the value of those farms, not how much they produce, how much they cost to build, it will increase the amount the Monkeyopolis will produce, but only in multiples of 2000. Yeah, I didn't get it the first time either, but let me cut to the chase. I wouldn't really use it except in one or two exceptional circumstances to increase your yield. You might want to use it to free up some space, but in terms of generating more money, I think there's only two circumstances where it makes sense, and I'll talk about those later with my nomad method. So yeah, to be honest, you don't really need a monkeyopolis. Okay, let's move on to the last way you can make money from monkey farms, and to be honest, it's not actually the monkey farm making most of the money. It is the merchantman. So if you get a central market, which is tier four on the bottom path of banana farm, not only does this generate you money, it also increases the income of merchantmen by 10%. And this can stack up to 100%, which means you're effectively doubling the amount a merchantman can make. If you didn't know, the merchantman is on the bottom path of Monkey Buccaneer, but this central market upgrade also applies to favored trades and the trade empire. Now, if you only get trade empire and 20 favored trade buccaneers, it honestly has an incredible yield. But the setback is that it'll cost you about 225,000 to build. If you pair this alongside 10 central markets, it will cost you a total of 450,000 to build but you will get the highest yield in the game. It's actually pretty phenomenal how much money this generates. We are talking 43,600 per round. That is insane. The best part is that you can still keep building Buccaneers. Trade Empire won't apply, but Central Markets will and every single favored trades buccaneer you build will generate you an extra 1000 per round. Honestly, it's pretty crazy stuff. Right, so that is all of the methods I know of using monkey farms to generate money. So, let's talk about the nomad method. This is the way I think you should use monkey farms to maximize your returns. Step one. Build a 200 farm and then build two more. So in total, three 200 farms. Then, depending on how aggressive you want to be, you can either sell some of the farms or you can wait to build up the cash because step two is building a 230 bank. Once you've built your bank, you're going to leave the money in there for nine rounds. Not ten, nine. So you're going to collect when there is 6,273 in the bank. To be honest, you can collect after 10 rounds when it's 7,000, but I feel like collecting one round earlier is more beneficial for actually playing the game and it doesn't affect your yield too much. While you're waiting for the bank to fill up, we're going to build more 200 farms. You might have had two left over from before, or you might have sold them, but in either case, we want to make sure three of them are on the map. And then it's just a case of building more banks. If you get a chance, upgrade your 200s to 230s. But if you do, then remember to build another 200 farm. We always want to have three 200 farms on the map. And once you've collected the money from the bank, use that to buy more banks or Use it to help out your towers, it's up to you. This process of building banks will continue until you've run out of space on the map. If there's no space left, remember to prioritize building banks over your 200 farms. Now that we've run out of space, remember, this is the time we need to shift our focus from yield to revenue. What this means is we're going to have to start selling off some of these banks. Now step three is optional and only applies if you've got the space to do it. 
What you need to do is build a monkey village and build two farms within its radius. Now you have to upgrade these two farms in very specific ways. One of them has to be a 104 and the other has to be a 400. Okay? One has to be a 104 and the other a 400. Once you've done this, then it's time to upgrade your monkey village to a monkeyopolis. If done correctly, this monkeyopolis should generate about 6,050 around. Now we move on to step four, and again, we're probably gonna have to sell a bank to make space. What we need to do is buy a 205, which is a Wall Street. Try to build this in a central location because it does help to collect all your crates. Step five is to buy a 520 Banana Central. Not only does it come with humongous revenue, it's also gonna increase the amount your banana research facilities generate. Step six is also optional. And what it involves is selling the Monkeyopolis we made earlier. Because we're gonna make a new one. This time we need space for a monkey village and three farms within its radius. You need to upgrade all three of these farms to four two zeros. And then afterwards, upgrade that village to a monkeyopolis. If done correctly, this should generate you 9,450 per round. Step seven is to build a 250 monkeynomics. And step eight is to fill the rest of the map with 420 banana research facilities. Thanks to the banana central we built earlier, these banana research facilities will actually have a very, very respectable yield. Step nine is optional. It's only applicable if you have the space, but it's to build a monkey city that will buff all of your tier five farms. Step 10 only applies if you can build 21 monkey buccaneers. If you can, what we want to do is get Trade Empire with 20 favoured trades. Step 11 only applies if Step 10 applied, which is, now that we've got our Trade Empire, we need to build 10 central markets. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Nomad Method. And now that I've imparted all this wisdom, all that's left for me to do is to thank you for watching this video. I've put a lot of time and hard work into researching all of this, so if you could like and subscribe, that would be great. And what I'm going to do now is actually play a game using the Nomad method to see how much money I can generate. So you're more than welcome to watch the rest, but if not, thank you again for watching and I will see you next time. Right, so I am going to play a game now trying to use the Nomad method. And before we start, as you can see, I do not have monkey knowledge enabled. And I'm going with Pyro, sorry, Gwendolyn, sorry, I call her Pyro. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play Lotus Island because I wanna see if we can showcase the Trade Empire. And we're gonna go on hard, we're gonna go on standard. Hard, standard. And so what I'll do is I'm gonna try and get past the first couple of rounds and then I'm gonna start farming. Now the problem we have with this map is I don't think we can get more than say 10 monkey farms on here. So, once we do get to Trade Empire, if we get to Trade Empire, what's going to happen is pretty much all of this is going to be covered by 10 central markets. Anyway, I will see you in a couple of rounds when we build our first farm. So I'm in round 24. I just lost three rounds because I forgot about camo. We got our first farm. We got 2 zero, zero. So we're going to build two more. Hopefully build up some more towers. I'm not very good at the game, but I do know how to farm. And hopefully we can survive enough to get our first bank. So I'll cut back when I do that. Right, so round 43, I'm not doing great, but I have got enough to finally get my first monkey bank. And with that, I'm actually going to get another monkey farm because I want three farms on the map. And then we're going to leave that for nine rounds. And hopefully survive. Right, so we're on 52. Our first bank is ready to collect. Again, we don't need to get to get to 7,000. This will do. That also means we'll get 
a, a single round earlier. So I'm going to collect here because I have a second bank which isn't full yet. Now with that, I kind of want to save for Plasma Accelerator, so I might wait for that. In the meantime, I'm going to keep saving up. Right, our second bank is now ready to collect, which I'll do here, 6273. This is still building. And what I'll do is I'm actually going to upgrade this one now to a bank. We don't have the money yet to upgrade that one, so what I'll do instead is build some more farms. Now we are running out of space though. Now I'm in a position where I've got a bunch of banks and one of them is out, they're all out of sync, which annoys me. So I'm, I'm not going to maximize yield by doing this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to collect all. So they all go at the same time. Right, so at least I know I don't have to collect them. Now I've got a lot of money to spend. Oh, what do I want though? I might upgrade a few banks and then I'll, I'll save up for something here. So if I do, for example, actually just do it here. Let's get some more glaives here. And balloon, no. Operation Dark Storm. Yes, yeah, so that should be enough to upgrade to one more bank. And now we've got two and a half to play with. I can't get balloon jutsu, so what I'll do is actually build another banana farm. If there's space for one. There you go, that's one there. Can I build one here? No, we're really running out of space now. Right, it's time to collect. We got one, two, three, four, five, full banks. So that should give us... Uh, um, we might as well collect that one, so I'll line them up. There you go, we've got plenty of money to play with. Now, if you were in this round and you were going to end at 80, you might want to start thinking whether you should be building more farms. Now, for the most part, you got about six rounds to play with as a general rule of thumb. But... I'll still be careful. Now, for us, we're going we're we're to keep, keep going into free play because there's so much more to showcase here. So, I'm not worried about this round count. Right, so we're coming up to the last round of the game and all of our farms are now ready to collect. Well, most of them. But we might as well collect them all. So now we've got 80 grand or so, and if we wanted to sell, we could sell. But we're going to keep going, and with 80 grand, what I'm going to try and do is that village combo. So let's try and get the village combo done first. So what we need to do is we need to sell this. And how, where can I, I can put monkey village here. I can even put it here. So I'll put it up here somewhere. No, I need to make sure it's the only two are in the radius. So if I put it... Oh dear, okay, first put it out there. I'm actually going to sell two more. And I have to be very specific about which ones I get. So, the first one... Right, is anyone else in the radius? Just him, okay, fine. This one has to be a one, zero, four. One... Zero, four. Okay. And the next one... I can just put that there, can't I? This one has to be a four, zero, zero. One, two, three, four. Right. Now... Right, make sure nothing's in there. We're going to make this a monkey opolis. Well, let's sell that. Only because it was in the radius. Now, anything else in the radius? No. So, if we sell this now, this, in theory, should make us 940 per round. In the meantime, while these banks are filling, I'm going to actually make a start. Oh, I do a kind of wish I got the spirit of the forest. I'm going to make a start on building our first monkey nomics. No, Wall Street, sorry, Wall Street. So that's going to be bottom path. Wall Street, and then two at the top. So I'm going to start with two at the top. And I'm going to go bottom path. And I'm going to wait. So I guess I'll see you. Hopefully I don't die, but... Oh yeah, let's start. I should go slowly and see. Oh gosh, 605, 605? Why 605? 
Six or fifty. That's what it was. No, six or five. Sorry. Oh wait, I need to stop. I need to pay attention to what's actually happening on screen. Alright, we should have this covered. Right, there you go. So we won, we've generated for the game 150,000. So nothing exceptional, but fair amount. But we're going to keep going into free play and see how far we can go. So, lock out there. And this is quite a hard map as well. We're limited in space. C map's always hard. I've literally got one buccaneer here doing nothing. And yeah, we're going to keep going. So what I want to do is actually I want to see... I want to get jungle drums here. Let's see, go slowly and see how much it generates. 605. 605 that generates. And so what that means is it generates 10 of those crates for 6050, which is exactly what we wanted. Right, so we're on at round 80. I'm actually late on the collection. But we've got 63 in the bank now. So we're gonna collect all. We need a little help, I think. I think we're suffering in terms of the actual towers. Um, but we can get, we can either get Wall Street now. Or we can help out our get Wall Street. And now we're saving up. So the next thing to do is to build a 520. So, but Banana Central. Big valuable bananas. That's going to take a while. So, I think I'll focus on buffing up my towers. We are pretty light in terms of defense. But hopefully... Things go swimmingly. In fact, the Wall Street now collects from the Monkeyopolis as well. So I don't even have to wave my finger around. Right, I've remembered to collect again. Round 79, uh, 97, so we're going to collect. Now we've got 56 to collect from. And we can get a couple of things. We can't get Flying Fortress. But what I might do now is try to get our... Up to Banana Central. So let's do that. Now we can spend on our towers. Anything useful? Let's get Glaive Lord. And why not get a Mentionman? There you go. Let's spend our money. Right, so we're in round 106. And now we can actually collect our bank, but we do have enough already to buy Banana Central. So that's fine and dandy. And we're going to collect here. Collect all. Right, so now we have 68. What do we spend on next? So what was step... What's it, step five? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get rid of that um village. I feel like it's optional, so I'm gonna skip that one for now. The next one is to get monkey nomics. So do we have space one more? Oh I feel like we should have. Right, what should we should we sell? Let's sell so monkey nomics I don't think produces any crates, so I'm gonna sell this one. In fact I'll just upgrade this to monkey nomics. Which should be a two five zero. So if we go like that, oh, we're, we're waiting for one monkey nomics. That will basically give us nine grand every round, every other every other round basically, until until forever. Until then, what can we do? I guess we just upgrade. Right, so it's round one one two one twelve, and I can finally get monkey nomics. Which means I need to keep pressing this button. One, two, three, four, five, six. What's next then? In our nomad method, it's to relate uh, to basically get rid of all of these farms, these farms, these banks, and replace them with banana uh, research facilities. So I'm gonna wait for them to collect. I'm actually gonna wait for them to collect, and then what I what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sell them afterwards. In fact, in the meantime, why don't we get a head start? on Trade Ember. So we need to get a bunch of Buccaneers in with favorite trades. And we can get a few in. We can probably get one more. Right, there you go. Right, so these are now ready to collect. So we're going to collect all. And we're not going to sell them, in fact. Oh, I forgot, this one is a bank. No, it's not, is it? Yeah, it is a bank. Right, let's uh, sell them. 
So we're gonna sell, 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 and sell. Now, how much do we actually need for Trade Empire to be effective? So each one of the markets costs 34 grand. And we've got 135. So we can build 10 of them right now. And it wouldn't be a terrible yield. Oh, I didn't realize I had so many free dark monkeys. Um, I think we wait. I think we wait. And what we do is we build these. Research facilities. Come on. I saw you could build somewhere here. Right, so we got a fair few. And this is going to generate a bunch of cash. Now, unfortunately, I can only get one close to Wall Street to auto collect. But we should have a bunch here. Right, so we do actually have our merchantmen. So, how many do we have? 20 plus one from the, the Wall Street, basically. So now we're going to try to start building our. Thanks, but what I might do in the meantime is actually try to buff up the defense here, because we are not struggling, but we're not doing great. All right, let's start building some more farms. And we're starting with Central Market. So it's one, two, three, four, and the top part of the thing. We can get one more in if we can fit it. Yeah, we can fit one in there. One, two, three, four, and then top off. And... I think it's time to actually start selling some of these. So if I sell that, and then put one in here. One, two, three, four. And sell that. And we can actually do one more. Sell that. One, two, three, four. And we can actually get quite a few in now. So if I get one more here. One, two, three, four. Sell that. Sell that. Oh gosh, we're running out of space. We're really running out of space. One, two, three, four. One, two. Oh no, that's not wanted at all. Sorry, I just wasted a bunch of money. One, two, three, four. One, two. Yeah. Can we get one more in? Oh dear. Right, what do we sell? What do we sell? What do we sell? I think what we sell is the monkey nomics. Thanks for the collection. I think we sell you. One, two, three, four. Ah, oh, I keep doing the wrong one. One, two, three, four. One, two. And what's left? Ah, oh, can we not possibly squeeze one more in? I think we're going to have to sell this one. Right, all right, there you go. One, two, three, four. One, two. So we actually made money because we sold a bunch of stuff. Now we've got plenty of money. What do we spend it on? Right, so we've got 11,000. Let's just see how much the trade empire will generate us. So that wasn't all the trade empires work, but we just got another 65,000. Right now, the thing is, right, every buccaneer I add now will give me an extra thousand per round. So now that we've run out of land, what we can do is fill up the sea. And this is going to make our income even higher. Right, what I'm going to do is because we're running basically just playing through this, I'm going to sell a couple of towers just to showcase the power of Trade Empire. So if I can get one in here, and then another one in here. And it's gonna be both marketplaces. Four, four, two. Four, four, four. So these are better yields, but not necessarily better income. So for example, if I want better income, 
I would sell, I would keep, the, I wouldn't have made that purchase, but I want to show you Trade Empire. So we got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And seven, eight, seven. In fact, let's pump it full of Buccaneers. We're going to get as many Buccaneers as we possibly can. And this is going to maximize the amount of money we can make. So, you're basically going to make it so you can walk on the sea. There's going to be that many boats. Right, is that enough Buccaneers for you? So, we got 394, roughly 400. Let's see how much we get this round. Eighty-seven. Eighty-seven, I think. That round. Eighty-seven. It's crazy. Oh, I forgot to get Glekmet crates, that's why. Yes, yeah, so I've got all this money. I've got nothing to spend on. I don't have any paragons. Right? I don't have any paragons. But if I did, I'd be able to buy this one. I'd be able to buy this one. Oh, I don't have that yet. Do I have any others? I'd be able to buy this one. I'd be able to buy this one, just about. I'd be able to buy this one. Look, oh yeah. I like this one. Where is he? Right, so we lost. We got to round 155. And we generated 3.8 million. 3.8 million using the Nomad method. So, if you watched here till here, I want to thank you very, very, very much for watching. And I hope you find the Nomad method useful. Anyway, take care, guys, and I'll see you next time.